A tiny house is such a personal thing. And so when you're designing your home, it really is so important that you make sure all of your needs are going to be met. And this next home that we're about to visit here in beautiful Queenstown is a great example of when you just get things right. G'day Leon, how's it going mate? Good and yourself? Very well, thank you. It is a pleasure to meet you. And this is a beautiful looking tiny house you've got here. Oh, thanks. So first of all, what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house? Well, I'd been looking for a solution for living. The traditional home didn't really quite suit me. I wanted something that was a lot more convenient, more practical use of space, something that was more ecologically friendly and Essentially, I was kind of tired of the traditional home, a lot of cleaning, a lot of maintenance, a lot of energy use, and being fairly nomadic by nature, um, I move around a lot. So something that I could actually call my own, but take with me at the same time. And then being inspired after watching quite a few of your shows, then, you know, it, it just seemed to be the perfect solution. And prior to building the tiny house, you spent a year traveling in a caravan, didn't you? Yeah, so um, it was after the first lot of lockdowns and we decided, well, really, why do we need to be in a house? I run a business online, so uh, I've got that flexibility that I can move around, and I'd wanted to spend some time really getting to know New Zealand and a lot more intimately, and there was no tourists, so perfect, perfect time, time, right? Uh, so yeah, sold up everything, moved into the caravan, and spent a year touring. And of course, you have now settled here in Queenstown, which is a very, very nice choice in New Zealand. And what an incredible parking spot you've got here. Yes, we were really fortunate. When I was looking around to find a builder for the tiny house, I met Ben, who was the guy who built this, and he happened to be living here, and it just worked out perfectly. You know, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Woolly sheep and mountain vistas, it does not get any more quintessentially New Zealand than that, does it? No. And we just find that it's such a beautiful spot waking up. Uh, you know, the sun comes from this side, reflects off the mountains. It sets from over here and again, reflecting off the mountains. It's just beautiful all day long. And now let's talk about the house. What size is it? So this is a nine by three on the downstairs. And then we've got about a one meter overhang upstairs. The cedar and the black exterior is such a classic look. And it's just so hard to go wrong with that, isn't it? Absolutely, you can't go wrong at all with it. That contrast is just so stunning and it just fits in so well with the mountain vistas. And of course, to take full advantage of all of the views, you've got these beautiful bifold doors and big windows throughout the home. Yes, it's just beautiful. You know, you can open these up, sit on the couch, look out, enjoy the views. We've got, obviously got them in the kitchen and again, opening them up and it just makes you feel like you've got that indoor outdoor flow at another level. Very important. And can you talk to me about the design of the home? Yes, so we wanted something that was clean, something that had a lot of natural materials being used in it, something that would fit within the environment, something that had character, but would blend in at the same time. Absolutely, and unquestionably you have achieved that here with this home. And you've only just moved onto the site, haven't you? So you haven't set up the deck or anything yet? No, that's all to come. So we'll have a nice deck that runs out probably about three meters running along the front here and give us that little bit more indoor outdoor flow and somewhere to put the uh, coffee table for the, you know, coffee in the, in the springtime. Got to have that outdoor spot to be able to take advantage of the vista. Absolutely. And I noticed that you have managed to get a washing machine out here though. Yeah, because I work at home, I don't like to have loud noise around me while I'm working. And of course, a washing machine can be quite intrusive in a fairly small space. So I just figured, well, why not put it outside? Made sense. Absolutely, it does. And I see you're collecting rainwater here? Yes, we get a reasonable amount of rain. Uh, there is actually a creek that runs down the bottom as well that we can pump up from. But of course, why not collect what you can? So we've got the tank on the back and then we go through a three-stage water filtration process and a UV sterilization, so excellent quality water. And what about other services such as power here? We were looking into solar, but it doesn't really make sense in the short, dark days of Queenstown. And we're lucky enough that we can tap into the main house here. So we've just got a 16 amp connector and that just works perfectly. And in addition to the house, you've got the garden shed there as well? Yes, so the garden shed is a real practical space for all of the extra stuff like you know the snowboard and the, 
gardening tools, and it just keeps things separate from the house. And you're right, when people are really concerned about what they can store in a tiny house, it's easy to forget that you can actually set up a shed next to your home as well and have a bit of additional storage there too. Yes, it's amazing how much you can really fit in there. Well, already from the exterior, this is a fantastic looking home and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Absolutely, come on in. Thank you, after you. Oh, now this is an especially spacious feeling home, isn't it? Yes, with the extra width and, you know, a three meter wide, it changes the dynamics of a space dramatically. And especially the height in here really helps as well. Yeah, and, you know, being tall. <laughs> All the difference in the world. Absolutely. And I think as well, the way that you've positioned the windows in this house really does help that as well, because you have such expansive views everywhere you look. Yeah, and again, this comes back to the time in the caravan. So one of the things I noticed in there was that even though it was a narrow space, it felt less narrow because you're just facing a window and it doesn't matter where you are, there's a window that just opens up. And of course, immediately upon entering the home, we are in your very comfortable looking lounge. Yes, comfort being the optimal word here. One of the things that I really wanted was a reclining couch. I work from home a lot, as I say, so sitting on a laptop and working on a laptop in the couch is my kind of go-to office. And so having something I can lay back, relax in the right position, perfect. Very important. And of course, to match the reclining couch, you have a very good sized television. Probably a little overkill, one might say, but again, it was on special, so what do you do? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Looks like you've got a bit of a serious sound system here too. Yeah, so my dad was a sound engineer growing up. Music was extremely important. And so again, it was one of those things that I wasn't gonna compromise on. We wanted some really nice speakers. And of course, here in Queenstown, it is freezing cold outside, but toasty and warm in here, thanks to the wood stove. Yeah, so we've definitely made an investment into the fire, which has paid off. We absolutely love this thing. Getting up early in the morning and throwing a couple of logs in and just starting the day, there's no better way. And you've got backups here as well though, because you do have the mini split too. We didn't want to go with one or the other, it was a definite both. And we've got this on automation as well, so I can actually activate it before we come home. So if it's a really cold day, uh, you know, you come back and the house is already pre-warmed or starting it up uh, before even getting out of bed and just taking that chill off in, in the you know, cold depths of the winter morning. And the planter box you've got up here is a very nice addition. Yeah, again, inspired by your videos, as I'm sure you can tell, but this was a, an absolute must for us. And we've got the LED strips running around inside, automated watering system because I'm too lazy to water, and then just sort of offsetting that with the window into the bedroom so we can enjoy it from both sides. Beautiful. And to that end, you've done quite a lot with the lighting in here as well, haven't you? Yeah, so all of the lights can change both the temperature of the white and also change color. So we can set the different modes and ambiences for evening or movie or however you like. And it's all voice activated and automated from control for you know waking us up in the morning with a soft red glow, etc. It's, you know, really nice. And in the loft up there, it looks like you've got a bit of an extension to your living space as well. Yeah, so I have a teenage daughter that comes to visit sometimes, so a space for her to, to be able to sleep when she does. And it's also acts as my meditation room now. Fantastic. And so your daughter is here part-time, but you also share this home with your partner, don't you? Yeah, she's at work today, but um, you know we both really enjoy living in this space. And what a kitchen you have in this home. Yeah, thank you. This was really important to my partner who loves cooking. You know, she really wanted a big space, which is always fun in a tiny house but I think we've managed to make it work. And I especially love the way that you have run the counters right to the windows. It just gives it an even more expansive feeling. Yeah, and of course, because we've got the bifolds wrapping around that countertop, it just means that once we open it all up, you know, you get those vistas again of the mountains and you just really feel like you're outside even when you're inside, which is just beautiful for cooking and eating. And of course, all the necessary appliances in here? Yeah, I mean, we've got the gas stove and a gas oven, so that gives us the more off-grid capability. We've gone for a dish drawer, saves in arguments in a relationship. Certainly does. <laughs> and of course, a decent sized fridge. Very important. And lots of prep space. Yeah, so again, we've used the breakfast bar here to kind of connect into the main counter, and that just gives us a lot more prep space and working space for when I want to sit down and work. That's right, because this is your office, isn't it? It is indeed. So I've got the uh, 
the monitor here we can pull out and move around and tuck away when we're using it as a breakfast bar or I can pull out and use for when I'm working. Lots of storage in the kitchen too. Yeah, we've got uh, obviously plenty of drawers and cupboard space. People always worry about this type of thing in tiny houses and in reality, I mean, I've lived in flats with much smaller kitchens and less space. And you've even got a pot filler. Yeah, so this obviously is for those who are too lazy to carry water from the sink to the stove because it's so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's very unusual to see that in a tiny house. It's unusual to find it in any house. That's right. And that is the kitchen corner of a man who loves coffee? Absolutely. I actually used to own a coffee shop when I lived in Thailand. Really? So, you know, can't be without a coffee machine. Absolutely not. Very important. And I'm guessing behind that door over there we have your bathroom. Indeed. Can we take a look? Come on through. Again, this is a very spacious bathroom for a tiny house. Yes, you know, the bathroom is an area where you don't spend huge amounts of time, but when you do, you don't want to really feel claustrophobic. So we kind of tried to design it in a way that was both practical and spacious. And what do we have behind here? Yeah, so this is our storage cupboard. So we can hang our jackets up and we've got um, a rack for shoes and just space for extra odds and ends. I love that you've got the door in here as well. That is such a nice feature. Yeah, so this was my partner's idea. You know, she loves gardening and she didn't want really the dirty dog coming through and making a mess everywhere. So we've got direct access to the shower. Great idea. Nice vanity basin as well. Yeah, so because we've designed it to go in the corridor, it needs to be relatively narrow. We were lucky to find this you know, nice concrete basin that has a slightly narrower profile than many sinks, but the extra width gives it a lot more practical use. Absolutely. Great size shower in here. Yeah, so this is a 100 by 100, so it's a little bit bigger than the average, but a luxury that is greatly appreciated. And I am really excited to see that you have a Clivus Multrum LP in here. We do. I really don't understand why these are not more popular. The Clivus Multrum LP is just so well thought out. You know, there's so little maintenance um, compared to other composting toilets. For us, it was an absolute must. You get all of the advantages of a composting toilet, but it does just take so much of the maintenance work out of it. And it sort of looks and feels more like a regular toilet to use. Yes, and not just that, but, uh, you know, again, because my partner's Thai, you know, they use the, uh, the bidet hoses, which is part of the kind of cultural thing. And uh, essentially, of course, you're getting a lot of water down, which is normally a problem in a composting toilet. It would but be. with the LP, it's not a problem. What a great solution. And then upstairs, we have the sleeping loft. Let's go. Now, I really like the way that these stairs are designed, and I think one of the main advantages to having a slightly wider tiny house is you can do this cool twist in the steps to get up. Yeah, it does take up less space overall when we can kind of compact it down like that. Bit of storage in there too? Yep, plenty of storage underneath. And beautiful touch with the bamboo on those stairs too. Yeah, we really like it. I mean, it just accents the rest of the bamboo throughout the house. It certainly does. And can we take a look upstairs? Yes, come on up. Let's do it. This is a very nice and sort of light open sleeping loft. And I suppose that's because you've got these wraparound windows in here. Yeah, we've gone for bifolds along this side and that just allows us to completely open it up during the summer, which is really nice. And also to let out any excess heat. Over here, we've got the window behind the bed, which just allows us to see that planter box, keeps things a little bit more open again, makes it less tight, and also allows for better heat regulation so we don't allow so much heat up from downstairs. Great idea. And then of course, from up here, wow, you've got some views. Yeah, this time of year, it's just fantastic. When the snow comes down, you just look out and it's just stunning. All of your clothes storage on the back wall there? We thought about going for clothes cupboards, but it didn't really make sense. They're a little bit more awkward to open in a small space. So we just thought, keep things simple, keep things open. Works very well. Good sized bed and sleeping area. Yeah, so we've gone for a latex mattress, which I just find super comfortable. Get such a good night's sleep. Absolutely, you can't beat them. And so how long have you been living in the tiny house now? So just coming on four months. Fantastic, and how are you finding tiny house life? Absolutely loving it. Now that we're living in the home, it's brought on a new sense of meaning to me because, you know, before it was a dream, it was an idea. Now it's a reality. And just waking up and 
feeling like this is my space, that it represents who I am, that it represents the way that I live, the way that I feel about life. It really has a deeper meaning than anywhere that I've ever lived before. I've lived in some great houses, some beautiful places, and all of them had one thing in common, and that's that they were designed by somebody else, that they didn't have my lifestyle in mind. And this house changes all of that. And I think what it's taught me is just what I really appreciate about the simple things in life. Just sitting in front of that fire, being able to relax and read a book without the stress of the day, and just being able to get up and enjoy that view with a coffee. You know, the really simple things, but that's what really makes life. This tiny house is absolutely gorgeous in its design. You can see that only top quality materials has gone into this one. Can we talk about the budget that was involved in bringing this home to life? Around about 180K. That's actually a great result, especially considering you built this during COVID where we saw ridiculous price increases in both materials and labor. So 180,000 for this result, I think is really good. Yeah, we're super happy. And with the home now complete, what does the future hold for you? The first stage to just enjoy the space and enjoy these mountains. That sounds like a phenomenal plan. You're living in Queenstown now, don't you have to learn to snowboard or ski? Well, I've had too many accidents for me to do that anymore, um, but I will be enjoying the hiking. Very good plan. Leon, you really have built such a beautiful tiny house here. It's open, spacious, filled with really great design, and it's one of those homes that just feels incredibly good to be inside. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Leon has done such an incredible job with the design of this tiny house. You can see that everything in here is just filled with such incredible quality. It's beautiful, open, and modern in its design. But I think what I like most about it is that in no way does it compromise comfort. I love how he has his reclining chair, his television, a great workspace, because ultimately it is so important to get those things right in your home.